Hi there and welcome to Holiday World TV. We're very excited today because we have Paul here who's the um, product manager for Italy for Albatross Tours and he's flown in specially today from Lake Garda. He arrived in Australia on Friday Yep. and he's come specially to see you so we're really excited to be able to share um, his knowledge of Italy and I've just had a chat with him for the last half hour and oh my goodness talk about what he what Paul doesn't know about Italy doesn't you know nobody knows so um, Paul is just going to run through his presentation that he's um, sharing with others across the country and the wonderful thing is that we would be able to get to share this with you so uh, welcome today well thanks very much Nora and uh, buongiorno tutti <laughs> Welcome Buongiorno. to Portofino. Yes, we had the backdrop the back. done specially just for you excellent. to come in. Excellent, so, excellent. And I suppose we you, you just what, love Italy. That's how yeah. you start. What's yeah, I, I love Italy. I was lucky enough in the 1970s in a state school in London to actually learn Italian. Um, and in those years, nobody learned Italian. <laughs> um, I think the, the offer was Russian, Latin or Italian. So I thought... 1970s, Russia. do I want to go and get shot in the Cold War? Uh, Latin was a dead language, and so Italian, well, it was Hobson's choice. And, and so here you are today, I still took Italian. taking advantage of that. So uh, I've been lucky enough over the last 30, 35 years to live and work in Italy, um, all over Italy, from Sicily right up to the Dolomites, um, and I've been lucky enough to look after the whole of uh, the Italian product for Albatross Tours over the last 20 years. Um, and I just love Italy and most of my friends uh, back in Europe, you know, they they call me an Italian trapped in a pommy's body. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the best description. <laughs> Sounds like a great life and we love Italy too. Um, Doug and I have just come back from the uh, Italian lakes. Oh, and, how was uh, it? It was amazing. So uh, it was albatross. So we're excited. Well, you'll be able to share some of those things. And Gary, who people will know here too, he came back from another Italian tour. So we love Italy and most of our customers love Italy. So, you know, why Italy? Why Italy? Well, why Italy? Very good question. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone I've ever taken to Italy who hasn't, hasn't fallen in love with it. Why Italy? Italy has a whole series of mystical medieval towns, such as Matera, um, you know, with the history in Italy and the Roman origins. So there's just one beautiful medieval centre after another. Why Italy? There's fantastic, stunning scenery wherever you go. Unlike certain other countries in Europe, there aren't any dead areas or flat areas which are just in, uninteresting. The whole of Italy is scenic. The whole of Italy has mountains and sea, beautiful, beautiful views, such as this picture of the northwest coast of Sicily. Why Italy? Now, I know you've got a few of these in Australia, but we too have unspoiled beaches. So some beautiful beaches in Italy, particularly in southern Italy. I think lots of people go to Italy for the food and wine, and that's one of the real USPs of Italy. Yes, sure. um, you know, this is a picture here of a good friend of mine. We've known each other 35 years. Mauro and Lake Garda teaching me how to make a really great dish of spaghetti alle vongole. That's spaghetti with clams. And uh, my Italian chef friends taught me always to make sure that I taste the water before I put the pasta in. And it needs to taste like seawater. If it doesn't taste like seawater, you don't have enough salt in there. Okay. Very, so very interesting tip. tip it's you a know? great tip, yeah. For the and <laughs> at the end, before the pasta's done and it's still even not quite al dente, Whack the pasta in the big pan with your sauce and your vongole a high heat and get the pasta absorbing all that liquid, the last two to three minutes of cooking. Turn the heat off, some great local olive oil and serve it up and you've got all the flavours of Italy. And part of the Albatross tour is we did a, a cooking tour, cooking afternoon, which was wonderful. So was it good? It was fantastic. So I can't remember, but people were taking notes, everyone that's a, a really good cook and does that have we already thinking about buying their spaghetti oh, machines great. and things like that so well, that's, really inspired people. you know i mean i think that's one of the thing on the albatross tours in italy that we've devised is we take people to off the beaten track trattorias mm. places that i've been going since i was a kid mm. my favorite places we love sharing that with your clients yes. you know and uh, I, I don't think there's many other companies that can really do that kind of thing or have that in depth knowledge and those contacts you know over the years you know people like Mauro you know the, the these chefs you know um, another reason why people would want to go to Italy is the depth of culture and art in Italy 
that really nowhere else has, all the ancient civilizations uh, that were present in Italy. You have to remember Italy was only a unified country in 1860, mm. not that long ago. Prior to that, it was a myriad of different countries all split up, and that's the beauty of Italy today, that you have that variety mm. and that local flavour and culture. Every single part of Italy is totally different, mm. one from the other. And as an example, that's a beautiful example of a Greek temple mm. in uh, western Sicily in Selinunte, mm. you know, where the, the Greeks invaded Sicily back in the, the 6th and 7th century. Mm. Um, that's another reason why people would go to Italy. Um, why do people go to Italy? Do you like ice cream? I love ice cream, especially gelato. Well, can you so, tell me what kind of ice cream Nicola there, my colleague, is eating? Well, it looks strange because it seems like a bun. So it seems like it's Whoa. on a bun. It so, is a bun. It First is a bun. Time. <laughs> but it's not your normal bun. Oh, really? It just no. looks like it, yeah. No, this is a brioche oh, in Sicily. Okay. And it looks disgusting because you think, ice cream in a bun? That's true. What? Yeah. It's, you know, savoury with sweet? Mm. Well, a brioche is a lovely sweet bun, and it's only in Sicily that they do this. Mm. And the Sicilians have it for breakfast, they have it a mid morning snack, really? they have it at lunch, they have it throughout the day. It's absolutely mm. fantastic. Mm. Yeah, why do people go to Italy? Uh, the Italians are friendly. Yes. They're friendly people. Um, they love their country, they're proud of their country. Um, you know, they give you a good welcome. Um, yeah, they can be challenging at times, doing business with them. Mm. The last 25, 30, 35 years doing business with the Italians, you know, you have to get into their mentality, um, negotiating with them. It's all about relationships. In Italy, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm. Uh, it's very much so. But, um, you know, friendly people. And that's a picture of my good friend Vittorio, celebrity chef down in, in Western Sicily. They call him the wild boar because he cooks often with, with his, his top off. Um, yeah, uh, people love Italy, you know, uh, mm. for the people. And that's what we found too while we were there. You it's did? just hospitable. We're just friendly, just felt at home and safe and people conversed with you and enjoyed your company and the food was fantastic as well. Great food, mm. great food. Um, and a really long season with a lovely climate. Mm. I mean, I took that picture down in, uh, in Sicily in late October. So, mm. you know, real, real you know, lovely weather and a long, long, long climate. And actually, a lot of the hotter areas of, of, of Italy, such as southern Italy, uh, we avoid in July and August with mm. our tours mm. because we don't want people to be uncomfortable. No, true. So we do tailor our tours according to the seasons. Mm. And it know? was perfect. We, just, we came back. We were there at the end of August, which was quite hot just before we arrived. And then the temperature turned and it was magnificent. Just perfect weather in September. September, that's yes. a beautiful month in, in, yes. in the whole of Italy. Yeah. That's how we like it. So that's why, why, why Italy, but um, I've got my favourites. Okay. You know, of the, the various tours we do. Yes. Um, I've got my favourite few areas, and one of those, and, and, and it's down to history as well, is Lake Garda. Now, mm. a lot of people haven't heard of Lake Garda because mm. they know Lake Como because of George Clooney, mm. blah, blah, blah. And we were there. You we were got there. The, got the photo of the roof of did George he, Clooney while we were driving past. Did he invite you in for coffee? We were just too busy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. He's, he's really down to and earth. And the locals, uh, the locals uh, love it. They're fine, but I understand it took him a long time to get in with the yeah. locals. They yeah. were very reserved at the beginning. But, <laughs> but now he's their best friend because he's done a lot for the community. Yeah, he has. He has. They do love him. Mm. And that's the Italians for you. You know, yeah. if you love them, they'll love you. Yes. So, but yes. Lake Garda, my favourite Italian lake. Um, Back in 1987, my first job in travel, um, a specialist tour operator going to Italy called the Magic of Italy phoned me up. I was in France at the time and said, Paul, we want to offer you a job in Italy all summer. And I was like, oh, great, great, where am I going? They said, Lake Garda. And I said, what? Lake Garda? Lake Garda? A lake? Ducks? <laughs> Pond? Pond? <laughs> Weed? Well, hang on a second. Well, what about Sorrento or Sicily or the Amalfi yeah. Coast? How wrong I could have been. In 1987, I turned up on Lake Garda. It just blew my mind away. And it was the only place that I worked for two years on a truck as a rep back in the late 80s. Um, it's just such a multi-dimensional place. It's so huge, it's like a sea. The south of it is like Mediterranean. It's 18 kilometers across. You could feel as if you're on the French Riviera. And then you go up the north end and suddenly you're surrounded by mountains and the lake na narrows out and it's very fjord-like mm. and very lakes and mountainsy. And the whole of the lake is surrounded by these beautiful towns 
um, all the different from one another. Um, and then the position of Lake Guard was so close to so many highlights in northern Italy, mm. so it makes a great base for touring, a great strategic location. It's actually featured in uh, two of our tours, the Italian Lakes in Tuscany and Alpine Adventure. Well, the Italian Lakes in Tuscany was the one we did. Right. So, and I totally agree, Lake Garda was magnificent. It's beautiful. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, there's, there's, there's a picture across Lake Garda of Desen Sarno, across the rooftops of Desen Sarno, looking right up the lake. You can see from the blue, it looks, doesn't mm. look like a lake, it actually mm. looks like the Mediterranean. Mm. It's a beautiful place. Then in the north end of the lake, uh, it gets very narrow. That's the fjord-like north yeah. end of uh, where Limone del Garda. And have you ever heard of Limone in the north end? Uh, well, well, I have around. now, but only because we were there. So, but before that, I had. Yeah, hadn't, so. yeah. And uh, Limone, what does that mean to? Uh, well, in you would English? say lemons. Lemons, you yeah. You would think lemons. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, it does mean lemon in Italian, um, and despite the fact that it is the most northerly point in Europe where lemons are grown because Limone has this mm. incredible microclimate. Limone actually comes from the name Limen, which means border, because where Limone is, it borders Lombardy with Trentino, the oh, next okay. state, you know? Okay. Uh, but because of this microclimate, one thing they did find that the people of Limone were living to great ages, and people who were in their 90s had blood of a 20-year-old. And the, the, yeah. the doctors said, yeah, they said, how come? You know, and they started looking into it, and suddenly they found this protein in their blood there wasn't in any of the science journals. Really? Yeah, and they said, well, this isn't even in the books. And so what they did was they sent about 40 of them out to America to test them for a few months, feeding them high cholesterol food, hamburgers. Wow. And as soon as they were eating these hamburgers, the protein was just eating up the cholesterol straight, straight away. And it was like, wow. And suddenly all the pharmaceutical companies wanted a piece of the action. And people from all over the world and in the Middle East were phoning people in Limone and saying, well, you marry my daughter, and uh, we want the gene. <laughs> Give us the Limone gene. So Limone is really this tiny little place in Lake Garda. It's the secret to long life. Wow. They haven't found a secret, though, really, have they? Well, it's in this, the, gene. the gene. But it's because through um, Limone's incredible location, right on the lakefront, with mountains behind it, with this incredible microclimate, so isolated in the time, that over the years it's inbreeding. You know, through the yeah. generations, that the, 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 this gene has, has this protein was produced. Oh. Mm. You know, it was like a freak of nature, if you like. Oh. You know, but you know that's Limone. And it's a beautiful place to visit. It's a really so. beautiful place. Um, up in the north end of the lake, Malcesine, another lovely, lovely, um, lovely uh, resort with its famous Scudigerian castle, where mm. a lot of people get get married these days. And while we're on tour in Lake Garda. Um, we take the clients to um, one of my favorite places. It's behind Lake Garda off the beaten track. And uh, it's an aristocratic family that have had this winery in their family since 1593. Can you believe it? And no, the owner isn't 500 years old mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. It was his grand, yes. you know, his, his four, forefathers who started it. So we take, um, we take the clients to this place uh, behind the lake called the Val Tennessee, which is the mm -hmm. Tuscany of Lake Garda that produces all the fantastic wine and olive oil. And they go to this high-end winery, beautiful estate, and taste some of the best wines. And in this area, there's this beautiful rosé-looking wine that's only produced in this area, and it's called Chiaretto, which means clear one. And it's made with four different red grapes, but it's a rosé. It's not a cuvee, a mix of white and red. It's just four red grapes. What they do is they take the skins out very early, and it has this beautiful rosé colour. And the clients Beautiful get to, oh, Just, superb. Yes, Did you try some when you were over? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a connoisseur, but I enjoy no, it. No. So well, that's, all, that's all that counts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that would be my hotel if, I yes. had, if, if, if it was for me. <laughs> I'd be happy bed. just with a <laughs> mattress in there. Um, yeah, and there is the jewel of the lake, Sirmione, mm. the beautiful peninsula jutting out from the south of Lake Garda with the blue Mediterranean waters around it. And if you look closely at the castle of Sirmione, like the castle in Malcesine, and like the castles around the lake, there was this very powerful family in the Middle Ages that ruled the area around Lake Garda called the Scaligeri. And they were at loggerheads with Rome. Mm. And as a disrespect to the Pope, they made these turrets, which you can see, that resembles the Pope's hat upside oh, down. Mm. So he said, you know, this was their disrespect to mm. the Papal State. Mm. 
That was one of our favourite was places. Was it? Yes, it's, it's beautiful. Magnificent. Yes, we had lunch on the waterfront there. It's Did you really? It's just amazing. Yeah. Dipped our feet in the oh. sea. Well, it's not the sea, in the lake. <laughs> but as you say, it feels like a sea. So. I think yeah. Lake Garda has to be, you know, this is where we have our Italian home and um, spend part of the year there. And, um, you know, when we take friends to Lake Garda, who, Lake Garda, it blows everybody's yes, mind, yes, you know. And I think on the Australian market, and I think it's true also on the North American market, not that many people know yet mm. about Lake Garda. Mm. And it's great that they can do that with you. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, Ah, right. Well, this is the reason why we don't want your clients to go on self-drive holidays in Italy. Yes, and why I'm not they sure should, if you can really see why, that, but we have why, a damaged, expensive why, vehicle here. Why they should choose a, a, a nice Albatross touring yes. coach. And we had that experience going through some of the <laughs> small streets. But I bet the and coach, we had a scrape. Yeah, was, was it very comfortable, the touring Oh, the coach, coach was fantastic. So, And we were up high, but we could... Yeah. We saw a few accidents. Because our coaches, what we did was we took 50 seaters and we got our, our partner, Corsi and Pampanelli in Italy, mm. to basically redesign the 50 seater coach so they would just have 30 something seats. Yes. So everybody has loads of leg room yes. and they're really comfortable. Mm. You know, but this picture here was actually <laughs> 10 years ago. It's myself sitting in, in the Aston Martin DVS that Daniel Craig smashed coming down the right. mountain and lost, lost the door. So the first 15 minutes of Quantum of Solace was filmed on Lake Garda. So you might and wanna... you were there. We were there, yes. we were there. Yeah, yeah, we were there. We were in, in, invited to the press conference and um, I was lucky enough to do a talk on cinema and tourism. And it was one of the highlights of my career because mm. I'm a big 007 fan. <laughs> well, I know plenty of people that are, so that's, that's fantastic. So Lake Garda, really, the, the unique selling points, the USPs of Lake Garda, is that it has amazing scenery. It's Mediterranean in the south and Alpine in the north. It's 160 kilometers around, so that's like 100 miles, 160 kilometers around. Um, and it covers three Italian regions, what they call regioni. We call them in the UK counties here, probably states. Covers three states. Um, Lake Garda ticks so many boxes, it's so multi-dimensional, there's something for everyone all the way through. Um, it has a fantastic microclimate, it's one of the best climates in northern Italy. And it features on our Italian uh, Lakes and Tuscany tour and our Alpine Adventure, Alpine Adventure tour. However, you do a lot more than just Lake Garda. We do, yeah. we do, and that's one of my favourites. Um, one of the ones I want to talk to you about is our new tour for next year, uh, particularly for our very <coughs> loyal and faithful clients who have been on a Sapphire members who have been on a few tours already. Um, we want to introduce a tour really getting under the skin of Italy, okay. somewhere really authentic. And um, there's a region in the east of Italy, um, just past Tuscany, called Le Marche. And I couldn't believe it when, even for myself, that Italy has been my life, that in 2003, 2004, I discovered Le Marche and I thought, I can't believe there's still wow. another area that has blown my mind mm. that I hadn't even been to. Mm. So now we'd like to take you know, clients down there. It's one of Italy's best kept secrets, Le Marche. And here is one of my favorite squares in the whole of Italy. It's the central square of this beautiful town called Ascoli Piceno which really is not very well known. It's not touristy, it's not commercialized, it's not well known. And this, this, this square, as you can see, it's got this stunning uh, travertine uh, surface with these old medieval buildings surrounding it. And it was actually voted one of the top five squares in the whole of Italy. And you know, you're including places like Rome, Florence, Venice, yeah. all the well-known yeah. places. Um, and in the evening, uh, as you can see, the, the, with the lights, they reflect off this travertine and there's this beautiful historic cafe in the square called the Cafe Maletti. And on the tour, we take our clients there for dinner and they're just looking over this square uh, in this real authentic atmosphere. Um, this cafe actually produces its own aniseed liqueur. Oh, really? Yeah, Maletti, which is really, really quite good. And if, if you ever go, I you know, would really recommend and you try it. If you do go on your own, that is a challenge to know where to eat, where are the good places. What, then you have that, all that covered with yes. your tools. And if for our free nights, well, our tour manager had suggestions about where to go. And you only get one chance in these 
uh, cities, this in these beautiful it. places, definitely want to be eating somewhere special. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm. And uh, we include a lot of very special places to eat in the tours, mm. which I don't think maybe uh, uh, you know a lot of companies would normally do, mm. uh, because you know we're using contacts that we've had for 20, 30 years mm. that, that aren't, aren't necessarily on the mainstream mm. tra travel travel route. And you know, and as you say, our tour managers are highly knowledgeable. They're fantastic, ours and uh, you know, they, they know they know exactly where 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 to where to go to eat. So again, on this alternative tour, one of the things we do, which is really authentic, um, just south of Urbino, on our way south in Le Marche, we go through this gorge called the Passo del Furlo. Hmm? And this gorge, <laughs> well, you try it, Pasto del Furbo. Pasto del Furbo. All you need to do is put your hands okay. up and then it'll, 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 honestly, that's all you need to do with Italian and it'll, it'll come. Um, and this was one of the routes that Mussolini, during his reign, used to take from Rome up to Rimini. He used to go through this pass and there's this little cafe and it's in the middle of nowhere. And he used to stop there, have a coffee or a bite to eat. And you get, we get off the coach, we go into this cafe, just seems like a normal cafe to anyone, and we walk into this back room, and it's still laid out, wow. as when Mussolini was stopping there, with all the paraphernalia on the walls, all, all, all the, you know, the writings, and the photographs, and the memories, it's just... I mean, that's what Australians like, because we have such a short history compared to Italy and other parts of Europe, so that really generally blows their mind. To wow. be able to be involved with something, well, like it, that. Yeah. to be there where yeah. You know, yeah. where history was made. Yeah, it blows my mind. And and, and here you can see actually in, in in this pass, there's there's they they've carved out of the rock Mussolini, his face, the contour of his face. I know it's, it's a little hard down, to see, you know, but but yeah, I'm sure we can. We'll Get have the that. details of the slides and things yeah. like that in store yeah, yeah. for you to come and have a look at. I'm sure yeah. you'd be interested. Yeah. So. And another, for me, another highlight of uh, this tour is down in the south of Le Marche, just over the border into Abruzzo. Um, we stopped for lunch in this just incredible village. It's called uh, Sa Santo Stefano di Sassanio, and it's, in, it's literally in the middle of nowhere in these mountains. And it was this village that had been renovated by this Italian Scandinavian uh, architect. And it's just like going back in time. And we go into this and we have lunch there. It's just so amazing that they actually filmed the majority of the film, The American, which starred George Clooney, and they filmed all of this actually in the village. Mm. Uh, and that, and um, from there, we, we, we go on to one of my favorite hotels in Italy, into Umbria, and uh, the hotel is a really good friend of mine, Tullia. I've known her for like 30 years. It's a family-run hotel, and it's just outside the medieval walls of Spoleto, which is a gorgeous medieval walled Umbrian hilltop town and the hotel's just outside the walls so it has views of surrounding countryside but when you walk out of the hotel two minutes and you're in this beautiful medieval medieval town and what I love about there is well one of the things I think I love the most is the food is 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 the truffles and the wild boar with the pasta and the red wines mm -hmm. you know and all this kind of stuff but I always say to anyone who goes to Umbria you know don't eat the bread um, but there's, that's twofold don't eat the bread one is if you eat the bread, you'll be full, and then you'll regret what you can't eat mm. afterwards. But don't eat the bread, because the bread in Umbria isn't good, and there's a reason for that. Back in the Middle Ages, the Italian government put a huge tax on salt. And as the Italians have always been very, you know, their, their own people, mm. so as a kind of a, a protest, um, the Italians stopped putting salt in their bread because they didn't want to be taxed. Mm. And to this very day, both Umbria and Tuscany, there's no salt in the bread. And in fact, when you taste it, it doesn't taste of much. And the locals are used to that. Though. They're used so to they that. Love that. They, they love that. They love that. But my point is, is you don't, don't need to eat it. Don't waste the you calories <laughs> on the bread. <laughs> you don't need to so eat it anyway. There's plenty of other <laughs> carbohydrates too, I take your fancy. <laughs> yeah. So keep things going. Well, I tried, and I didn't have the bread either so when I was there. Oh, uh, Spoleto, <laughs> yeah, lovely place. And Tulia makes our groups feel so welcome. She's. She's one of my best kind of friends, as in, you know, because obviously one thing with our hoteliers, we build up this long-standing mm. relationships, 20, 30 years. And I'd like to think that the way she treats our clients is she has us in mind as well. When, and when that's she's what doing we that. found with all the hotels. They were very personal. Good. And that's, holidays are about that. It's yeah. about the in people that you meet and the interactions you have with the locals. The locals. So, yeah. Um, Le Marque, yeah, Italy's best kept secret. So it has coast, countryside, and mountains. It has the whole shebang. 
lovely medieval villages, it's authentic and unspoiled. Great food, porcini, mushrooms, truffles, and the very best reds. Oh. I mean, I know, oh, you, you know, and That's really, really good. friendly, authentic people because Le Marque has never had tourism because they've always been very self-sufficient mm. and they don't need the income from tourism. So they like us. They like tourists. Yes. And they're, they're really interested to know why you've, why you've come there. Mm. You know, and I, I, I find that really refreshing. I can't say it. I say okay. Perugia, oh, but that's on, not right. We're going on to another, well, another one of my favourite areas, <laughs> the Deep South, which is one of our tours. Oh. The Deep South of Italy, Puglia. Oh, Puglia. Yeah, because okay. you don't not pronounce. Perugia. You don't pr pronounce what? the. No, that's in Umbria. Oh, that's why I'm confused. <laughs> I'm still confused. <laughs> So, <laughs> always something to learn, isn't there? Puglia and Sicily. And here on the map, you can see Puglia is, is the heel of Italy. Oh. And Puglia is a beautiful region, which is really up and coming. And it's really up and coming in the UK as well. Um, you know, people are just discovering it. And um, the wine there is massively up and coming, both in Puglia and Sicily. Because the wine in southern Italy used to have real issues because the climate, like Australia, is very, very hot and very mm. dry. And the wines used to be very syrupy and very strong mm. and they weren't really drinkable and so i was chatting to diego planeta he's the founder of uh, one of the best wineries in sicily planeta winery uh, and i said well how did you you know in the last 10 15 years you know you've turned around sicilian wines you know and he said paul he said it was a real journey he said uh, you know nobody understood our land uh, hot land, the, the Italians from the north, the wine technicians came down, they didn't understand our land. But I heard about this guy from Piemonte who was down in Australia making these great wines in the 80s, which would, would have been during the times that, you know, there was the New World Revolution with the, the, the Merlots and the Cabernets and the Shirazes. So he said, I thought this guy would understand Sicily. So I said, well, how did you do it? He said, I booked a ticket, I got on a plane, and I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And this guy came back to Sicily, and that's what happened. They then took their native grape, the Nero d'Avola, and they crossed it with Cabernet, Shiraz, Merlot, and today, some of the best wines you'll ever, you know, you'll ever, you'll ever... Well, I don't know about that region, but a lot of regions in Italy and other parts of Europe, they don't irrigate like we do. No. So it's just the wine is how it's produced how it from nature. So I presume that, that that was what they were having beforehand. Yeah. And they've just had to work with that. They've is had that? to work with it. Yeah. And now the, both Puglia and Sicily, in terms of value for money, I mean, uh, you know, I know, the wines are fantastic here, but I can see the price on them as well. Mm. But I mean, in Puglia and Sicily today, some of, the, some of the trattorias, you can get a real fantastic wine in a restaurant for about 10, 12 euros, which mm. is uh, more or less about... Fourteen dollars, mm. Australian dollars, that's, fourteen, that's, fifteen Australian that's great, dollars. Great value in you know. traveling, for sure. So, um, anyway, when you're down in Puglia, one of the real centres is UNESCO World Heritage Site, mm. and it's our base for the tour. As you can see, the is Albero Bello, which um, and that's a difficult one to pronounce. I'm not. I'm not even attempting. <laughs> that. That's up to you. I just <laughs> leave like, Italian to you. And, where where we've got these incredible uh, conical shaped houses that the people used to live in, the the Trulli. Uh, why the conical shape? Again, the good old Italians trying to dodge tax. Nothing's changed today from you know 500 years ago. So the the tax was based on the square meterage of a roof. So they said, well, huh. instead of making a roof uh, that you're able to measure, let's just make a round roof, and you you know you can't get a tape measure around mm. it. And that's what they did. And on the tour, uh, as you can see a picture there, your house, your home for four nights in Alberobello, because we have good long stays in our mm. places to get under the skin, is actually in these lovely mm. truly. And Australians have just discovered them, and our clients are starting to ask about going. Really. There, so. It's fantastic that you offer that now. Well, if you've seen, you know, The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, for me, whenever I'm there, I go down and I call my, all my friends down in Albero Bello, like Alex, I say, oh, you know, how's it going in the shires? <laughs> you know, because all around there's this lovely rolling green countryside with dry stone walls and these little houses, and it yeah. just feels like a scene out of The Hobbit. You know, yeah. it's something that's really, really unique. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we stay in there. And um, our partner down in Albero Bello, this used to be his office, um, it used to be his office and then he decided that he needed to um, you know have a good base for breakfast and so he turned it into a breakfast place and because he had a vegetable plot out the back and it was just born by by pure chance he thought vegetables breakfast why don't I do a trattoria 
and he created a unique concept where the vegetables were coming directly from the plot that we're about to see onto the plate. Mm. And on our tour, we actually eat there. Mm. So this is the back of the, um, the Trattoria Terra Madre. So there's the vegetable plot. And in the summer, there's all tables and chairs along here, along the side. So you're sitting there looking at the menu and you're looking at the vegetables and you can see all the signs. And it's been such a success that all these people from around the world, last, last summer he had Madonna and his family eating there. If it's and good the albatross in, and we, we're there. there. We go yeah. there. We go there for breakfast every morning, and we have also yeah. a meal there. Fantastic. So that's great. Um, and in Puglia itself, you've got love, lovely attractions such as Ostuni. They call it the oh, White City. Beautiful. This beautiful hilltop town. And then when you go down into the south of Puglia, which again changes, the Italians call it the Florence of the South because the capital down there, Lecce, mm. has this beautiful, beautiful Baroque. Mm. architecture and churches mm. like you can see in this uh, this slide here and we actually go down there for the day um, and then from Alborobello we go on for a couple of nights into one of my favorite I know I have many favorites but this town is just mind-blowing and in 2019 it's going to be the European city of culture mm. so go now before everyone yes. goes yes um, it's called Matera and it's actually just over the border from Puglia into okay. Basilicata mm -hmm. and it's so authentic when you the only way I can describe Matera is like you feel as if you're in a scene from the Bible it's like walking into a film set and because of that they filmed The Passion of Christ there mm -hmm. with Mel Gibson mm -hmm. and we go to his local trattoria where they named some fettuccine fettuccine alla Mel Gibson after him and all the waiters there they'll come up on their iPhones and show you how they've been extras in all the films oh, cool. And in Matera, they've just filmed Wonder Woman, which has just come out, and uh, also the remake of Ben-Hur. Mm. And it's just because it has this incredible uh, atmosphere. And we stay there in these luxury caves, mm. because the people there used to live in these caves. Mm. Um, and in all my life, along with a place I stayed in Vietnam back in the 90s, in, in uh, Dalat, uh, which was a place called Hang Nars Treehouse, this property, is the most unique place I've ever stayed in, yeah. and we stay there. And wow, it's, wow. Uh, it's makes me want to do that tour now. <laughs> Next, it's just so, so much. There's a lot to choose from, so it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Puglia, great yes. climate, um, great food and wine. Primitivo is the local wine. Puglia produces more olive oil than anyone else in Italy. In fact, a lot of the olive oil you find in Tuscany is actually from Puglia, mm. and they've relabeled it. Mm. Um, lots of UNESCO sites, great touring destination, great mix of villages, cities, coastline and gastronomy. And then from Puglia, wow, along with Lake Garda, this is my favourite in the whole. Have you ever been to Sicily? No, I haven't. Oh, I, I have been, just into Tormina. That's, Did you like it? It was fantastic. We were just there for the day. so Sicily. Yes. So I Sicily. wouldn't say we've been to Sicily. We've had a taste. Yeah. So we definitely need to go there and it's explore. Like, it's like... You're not in Italy anymore. Mm. Well, the tour's the Deep South. Is that what's the tour? Yeah, the, name the of Deep the tour? South is Puglia and Sicily. Yes. But you arrive in Sicily. I mean, I was 16. I was learning Italian. I was having problems with the language. I had a neighbour in London who was married to a Sicilian. They said, do you want to go down there for the summer? And I asked my mum and dad, and they kind of said, well, OK. And I took a train from London down really? to, yeah, yeah, Palermo in 1978. Oh. And I spent the summer down there. And I remember getting off the train and just looking out and seeing these palm trees and this exotic atmosphere and I just felt that I was somewhere totally different yeah. and if you look at Sicily's geographical location mm. there are parts of Sicily that are actually closer to North Africa mm. than you know mm. than, than to, to Rome you know mm. um, it's just an incredible melting pot so much so that did I love it that two years ago um, most of my friends say I'm not that romantic but I actually renewed <laughs> my vows with my wife after 22 Thanks. years of marriage, we went to the church up above Taumina in the Godfather villages where we'll be going on the tour and um, renewed our vows in the church where Michael Corleone married Apollonia in the Godfather. Um, and the Bar Vitelli, um, as you can movie. see there. We're having a yeah, movie yeah. tour in Italy, aren't this, we? You know, Francis Ford Coppola was there all these yes. years ago and it's still quite authentic. And when our groups are there, they go to this fantastic Trattoria in the Godfather village and have this blowout seafood meal at Trattoria Agostiniana 
and the seafood is just wonderful and you're sitting in a restaurant just surrounded by locals mm. I mean it's just all locals mm. there mm. and I think it's safe to say that most of our clients that have been there just absolutely mm. love it mm. um, <clears throat> I love Sicily um, Sicily is so big it's the size of Wales it's the largest island in the Mediterranean so every area is different so the southeast is what we call the Baroque Southeast, and we actually go down to Ortigia, which is the island just off from Syracuse. Mm. And it's got this beautiful Baroque architecture, and that's Piazza Duomo, which is one of my favorite spots for a, an Aperol Spritz, which is one of the Italian drinks. Did you try it drinks. when you were there? Yes, the orange, I did. The orange drink? Yes, I did. Did you enjoy it? No, it's not my thing. <laughs> it's not your cup of tea. <laughs> I'm honest, so it wasn't no. my thing, but that's okay. Yeah, but yeah. Everyone was everyone drinking. Drinks everyone it. drinks. Everyone drinks. Everyone drinks. An acquired taste. Like, it's a, not quite yeah. like Vegemite, but not quite, not like, quite no. the acquired taste of that. I'm sure it would be easier to try. But, I'm but, sure if you go back, it's like everything. Yeah, so Once I'll, you've had a few that's more, exactly. I'm sure you get to I'm like sure it. I'm sure it'll be just, it's just part of being <laughs> into it, isn't it? But what I love about Sicily is you've got the Mediterranean East, and you can see from this photo that where Taormina is located, it's luxuriant, it's green, you've got this incredible vegetation, it's kind of a bit like Madeira or like Gardoni Riviera on Lake Garda. You've got this Mediterranean East. You can see Mount Etna there in the background, Sicily's volcano. But then from there, when you start traveling west across Sicily, it changes and the western part of Sicily is extremely African and Arabic. The landscape changes, has a different feel to it. And there's a picture of Castellamare del Golfo, which is one of my favorite all-time favorite towns in Sicily, so authentic. This was where the origins of Cosa Nostra, the Mafia, were. Oh. All the, the famous, well-known American Mafia families emigrated from this town. And in the 70s and the 80s, when the Mafia wars were going on, when drugs were coming into the loop, it was all happening here in Western Sicily. Oh. And it's here that our clients uh, <laughs> take a lovely boat ride along the coast and our partners who, who run the boats there, um, the grandfather, years and years ago, used to take uh, this chap called Salvatore Giuliano, who was a Western Sicilian bandit, like a Robin Hood figure, mm. that Mario Puzzo wrote the novel, The Sicilian, and he used to take him on his boat and hide him from the authorities in the caves along the coast. So this is, this is somebody that takes yes, your guests they take on us. Tour. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> But I can guarantee you seen, yes. that I can guarantee you our guests won't be sleeping with the fishes, <laughs> you know, because with the boots, you know, we, we still, we still, we still <laughs> we go come there. Back. They, they, they all will, come they, back. They come back. But there's that authenticity <laughs> that and that experience yes. of knowing, knowing, uh, you know, what's what's what. And on the boat trip, they end up. Look how Arabic that is mm. in the beautiful uh, Western Sicilian resort of San Vito Lo Capo, which is internationally famous for couscous. Why couscous? Because the Arabs were in Sicily for 200 years, uh, dominated Sicily for 200 years, and they brought their couscous with them. Mm. But because they didn't have the meat, they used seafood and fish. So you have the most wonderful fish and uh, seafood couscous. And once a year, they hold this uh, international couscous festival in, uh, in San Vito, wow. which is wonderful. Um, and this is one of the places that, that uh, you know our clients go on, yeah. on, on, That's on, fantastic. on, on tour. So, are you still with us? So I know that you can tell that Paul just exudes Italy. And if you were thinking that it, visiting Italy was Rome, Venice and Milan, well, I'm sure that we've learnt today that it's a lot more than that. And our customers and what we are here for, Holiday World exists to help um, and create holidays of a lifetime for yeah. our customers and we have the opportunity and it's just so wonderful that you've been here with us today to explain a lot about Italy and we'll be taking advantage of your information to help you um, get more out of your Italian holiday. So um, just in closing, was yeah. there anything else you wanted to share with our um, holiday makers? for today? Well, I just, you know, got to say this, if you haven't been to Italy before, then, you know, you really need to go because I know people say I'm biased, but <laughs> <laughs> I think once, once somebody has been to Italy, they all agree that it just has the content and richness in one country that no other country has, I think, in the world. And, you know, there's, 
little wonder that it's our top selling uh, destination and top selling mm. country. Um, and for those of you who have already been to Italy and seen the better known things, I would, even though you may not have heard of some other places and you can't visualize what you're going to oh. see, I'd really, really urge you to take the plunge and go to some of the lesser known places and some of the tours that we're now creating, such as the Alternativo, oh. Um, and we're going to be creating a uh, tour to Sardinia for 2019 and I just hope that that has whetted you know your appetite enough and um, you know I hope Albatross Tours in Italy um, you know is an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> well as I said we've been with Albatross the reason is because you really get in depth into places and you chatting today makes me just want to go back more and more. I've been two or three or four times already and and I haven't even touched any of a lot of the places that you've said today. So I'm sure most of our customers are like that. So thank you, thank you well, very much for being here. Well, thank and you. it was really fantastic for you to come off the plane and thanks. come up, to, up from Sydney just to well, see us and to share all that wonderful information thanks, with our customers. Thanks so for thank having me, Narelle. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so bye for now.